Hard to believe, Wendy, the computer recently celebrated the birthday of the world's first was built 50 years ago. That is amazing. And that first computer weighed 66,000 pounds and was the size of a house. Now imagine trying to haul that one to a business meeting. <laughs> well, today's computers, of course, are smaller, faster, and more efficient because of one invention, the silicon chip, or microchip, as it's often called. What's amazing is that microchips are no bigger than the size of a thumbnail, yet so advanced they can carry out hundreds of millions of calculations a second. Here's a look at how they produce these tiny techno brains. The silicon chip. Its looks are truly deceiving, so small, yet so incredibly powerful. How does it work? Inside each chip is a complex maze of circuits, miniature highways. The circuits carry electronic information from one place to another. The more circuits you have, the more powerful the computer. The closer they are together, the faster the information can travel. By making the, the structure smaller, the transistors work faster, they can consume less power, we can put more of the system on the chip. What are these superstructures made of? Silicon, which has special electrical abilities. It's also one of the most common materials on Earth. Silicon turns out to be the material that has the best combination of properties for working at the temperatures we have here on Earth. And that, combined with the fact that it was uh, a very broadly available material, made it uh, especially effective in this technology. How broadly available? You could find silicon in common sand. Big truckload of sand comes on in to the Silicon Manufacturer Corp. And uh, they go and they take the, silica, the sand and they try to figure out a way to extract just the silicon from it. Sand is usually a combination of silicon and oxygen. And so if uh, you react the silicon dioxide with various evil chemicals, you can pull the oxygen away and just leave the silicon behind. How do they change silicon into working computer chips? First, they shape the silicon into giant rods up to 12 inches wide and six feet long. These rods are then sliced into wafers thinner than a human hair. More than 100 chips will be built on each wafer. After you've sliced the wafer, this is what you get. It's a nice, shiny piece. Silicon is a, as you can tell, it's got a gray metallic luster. It kind of feels a little bit like glass. And this is the starting material for making chips. The next step is to build the circuits that will turn the wafer into a fully functional chip. How do they do that? First, they design the circuitry on, what else? Computers, printing a large poster-sized blueprint and triple checking it for errors. Then they photographically reduce the blueprint and project the pattern onto the silicone wafer using ultraviolet light. How do they carve the projected image into the silicon wafer? They hire really small people and no, they, they use various chemicals that uh, are optically sensitive. The optically sensitive chemicals react with the silicon that's been exposed to the light. This material, when it's been exposed to light, it gets weakened by the light, and then you can just wash it away with a solvent. And the stuff that wasn't exposed stays on, and the stuff that was, you know, it gets removed. With millions of these electronic highways on each chip, it can now operate as a complex circuit. How do they make sure unwanted dust particles don't get etched onto the chips? They work in specially designed rooms that are some of the cleanest places on Earth. These rooms are approximately 10,000 or 100,000 times cleaner than a hospital operating room. We are processing dimensions that are about 400 times smaller than the width of a human hair. And so a dust particle can destroy an integrated circuit very easily. To keep up with demands to perform more and more tasks at a quicker pace, they had to devise a way to squeeze more circuits on a chip. How'd they do that? They stack the circuits, like adding floors to a building. Basically, it's a series of steps where we replicate patterns from a stencil onto films on the wafer, a silicon wafer, and etch them into those patterns and build a three-dimensional structure that can have as many as 20 layers in the process. How complex are these multi-layer chips? If these millions of circuits were the streets of a city, it would be larger than New York. Next, a machine tests each chip to make sure it works. And then a diamond tip saw cuts them off the wafer. 
How are the working chips made ready for use in computers and other machines? The chips are connected to contact pads with gold wires one one thousandth of an inch thick. The contact pads have protruding legs that make them easy to be plugged in when they reach their destination. To ensure a safe trip, chips are mounted in plastic frames, stamped, and packaged. Approximately 170 million microchips are made every year, and there are an estimated 200 billion chips already doing their thing in cars and copiers, phones and faxes, vending machines, and virtually every electronic device in the world today. I think the microprocessor is really having a revolutionary effect. And I think looking back 100 years from now, it'll appear at least as significant as looking back on steam engines and railroads and one thing or another that were the initial products of the Industrial Revolution. In the last 10 years, this tiny piece of technology has changed our lives in more ways than we could possibly imagine. As chips continue to get more advanced, it'll be exciting to see what other doors they open in the years to come. It is just staggering to think they are doubling the speed of those chips every 18 months. The scientific invention that keeps giving and giving and giving called an upgrade. And we still complain that they don't go fast enough.